Okay, um, next up is Tonke from Grafana. The plan for the talk is that it takes roughly 20 minutes, so that we have 10 minutes for extended Q&A session after that. So please, if, if the talk is over, if you could, could please stay seated and remain quiet, because otherwise nobody would understand the questions and the answers. So, uh, welcome Tonke. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah. I uh, hope to uh, talk a little bit about Grafana, uh, specifically the upcoming version of Grafana. Uh, and if I have time, show some tips and tricks uh, in the demo as well. Um, but leave some time for questions because there's usually a ton of questions when I do these talks. Um, my name is Jorge Adegord. Uh, I'm the co founder at Grafana Labs, the company behind the project and supporting the project and also trying to build uh, services and products around Grafana. Um, Grafana is an open source monitoring and data visualization tool licensed under Apache 2.0. Of course, found on GitHub. Looks something like this. Uh, you build a oh, maybe the better the light theme or the enterprise theme because people are scared of dark UIs. Um, <laughs> I actually might use this in a demo because it looks better in this room because of the, all of the lights. Um, yeah, we build the beautiful dashboards of graphs and other panels. Uh, the graph is kind of the, the, the cornerstone of Grafana, the, the powerhouse panel. I um, just want to get a show of hands in here and grab a, grab a photo. Who in here actually, sort of, at some point, have used Grafana? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> okay. That's, that's good to know. Uh, kind of what I was hoping for as well. Um, Anyway, you might not know some, some of this. So I'm just going to have a few slides on some of the history and the growth of the project. Um, uh, this is a sort of started as a hobby project of mine four years ago now, uh, almost uh, sort of, uh, four, uh, four years and a, and a week or so uh, since the first release. Um, and at the time, I was really in love with Graphite and time series, application metrics, stats D, um, and the like. And I was really so sort of feeling that the, the dashboarding solution for those tools were, were lacking. And I was also really sort of enjoying using Kibana, which had kind of uh, a really nice solution for dashboarding for logs. So I took inspiration from that and uh, started working on Grafana. Uh, and initially, uh, we only supported Graphite, but over time, we added support for, for other data sources like InfluxDB, OpenGSDB, Prometheus, which has sort of become usually popular lately, uh, and Elasticsearch. Uh, and lately, we've also added support for MySQL and Postgres, so that you can uh, query your SQL data directly from Grafana. Uh, we also have some, beyond, these are the core data sources that are from bone. Oh, I actually forgot CloudWatch is also a core data source. But um, it's, it's commercial SaaS. So. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, uh, we, not, 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 at least, not, not suitable for this conference. Um, and anyway, um, we also have a ton of data sources uh, on our on the com, so the plugins and panels, apps, uh, and a community-powered uh, sort of repository of the, uh, sort of ready-made dashboards. Um, as I said, this project has now ex existed for four years, um, and during that time, we've kind of seen a really incredible amount of growth. Uh, starting from version two, we added some very basic server reporting, so we can sort of see what versions are running. Um, and uh, so the last three years, we've kind of seen how, how many Grafana servers are actually running, not just that, track downloads, but actually see uh, how many are actually using the software. Um, and of course, the real numbers, so right now we're at 130,000 reporting services, no servers, but of course it's a lot more Grafana installations running because a lot of people turn off the, the user reporting. Um, it's, but it's interesting to see sort of how, how this trend has sort of progressed in the last four years, and it's kind of uh, that the trend is also increasing in, in sort of in velocity and kind of exponential growth. And uh, part of that is, of course, that like Grafana is amazing, and it sort of uh, solves this kind of uh, uh, niche um, domain where there's not a lot of competitors. But I also think that uh, the, the need for observability and good sort of sort of monitoring tool uh, tool has also increased. With the advent of some more elastic infrastructure uh, and uh, sort of microservices and more complex application 
uh, production environments, the need for good observability tools and, and monitoring tools has also increased. So Kefar is kind of riding that wave as well. Um, the only sort of pure installation is we have also seen a tremendous growth in the open source project in terms of sort of interest from uh, outside contributors and uh, uh, other companies uh, as well. And uh, we're, we're also growing the core team just in the last couple of months. We've grown more than double the team from three people to seven people. We also last year launched a community site to help sort of users and developers uh, sort of be successful with Grafana. Uh, and it's actually a long work to support this community site because we support so many data sources uh, and most of the questions are related to a, a particular data source, how you query this and how you query that. So <laughs> can I ask any community to also help with this because it's uh, causing a lot of work for us uh, in the core team to, to actually answer to SQL questions, how you, how you query this in SQL and for if we see your Prometheus. Um, anyway, pretty amazing uh, growth for that project. It's also really great but the fun is that it can be used so many, in so many different domains and circumstances. And most of the companies that use it are also kind of really cool and they use it for different things. And uh, a couple of years ago we saw that SpaceX was using it in their sort of, uh, launch control center when they landed the first Falcon 9 rocket. And I, that, that kind of, when I saw that it kind of made, made my day. Um, but it's just cool. I mean, uh, of course, a lot of you use the product for application monitoring and infrastructure monitoring and metrics and application uh, analytics. But it's also being used for sort of uh, in agriculture where they put sensor in the grounds and sort of look at the sort of fertility of the soil and or you use it for so sort of industrial sensors or home automation systems. And I mean, where a couple of guys use it to monitor the availability of t-shirts in the, uh, in the um, exhibit hall. Uh, let's see. Now to the real interesting part. I will we'll kind of jump over the intro to Grafana since most of you are familiar with it. Um, most of the, all of the demos I'm going to do is in, in D5. So, uh, a lot, of, uh, some, uh, a lot of things has changed in V5 in terms of just look and feel, uh, and we've kind of moved, moved your sheets a little bit, so don't be mad. Uh, but uh, hopefully all, all of the changes are going to be sort of for the better. Uh, as I said, before it's all about building dashboards composed of these sort of panels, and um, that hasn't changed. <laughs> I mean, nothing has changed beyond just uh, some minor UX changes. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with sort of the basics of Grafana, you add these panels, you jump into edit mode, uh, and uh, you are taken to the metrics tab. The metrics tab looks different for each data type of data source. So in this case, I'm using uh, uh, Graphite, and I get sort of a Graphite query editor that allows me to explore uh, the metrics available in Graphite. Uh, and uh, once I sort of found a metric, I can apply uh, transformations to that to the sort of graphite uh, transformation functions and um, yeah and, and then there are of course tons of options for the graph panel. But I mean uh, this is this this is nothing new particularly for the for the V5 release. I just sort of if, if you haven't if it was a while since you used Grafana or if you haven't seen Grafana before, you kind of each each panel is kind of this isolated thing that you write your metric queries in and you show data. Uh, but there are ways to sort of uh, build more dynamic dashboards as well that use something that's called uh, something called template variables uh, that allows you to build more dynamic dashboards where you get these kind of drop downs at the top that allows you to sort of quickly change the scope of the data for uh, for multiple panels. Anyway Back to what I really wanted to show, uh, talk about was V5, and the biggest sort of thing that uh, that uh, in, there were a couple of big things, but the biggest thing uh, that I worked on that I'm sort of really excited about is the new grid system uh, and what it kind of enables. Um, because before in the front, it was kind of clunky to move panels around, create layouts, 
and all that felt very sort of uh, clunky. Uh, so now under Fallout 85, you have a kind of more modern uh, layout system where panels move out of the way when you resize them, and uh, it's a lot easier to move panels around. But the most exciting thing is that it's going to enable more layout types, so you can have sort of Layouts like this wasn't possible in, in Grafana before because everything had to be laid out in rows where each, uh, with, the, with the height of each sort of panel needed to match. So you couldn't have some really high vertical panels on the side. Um, anyway, so, so that's so really exciting. I, I fucked, fucked up this layout now. But uh, uh, I'm really excited about. That, that aspect, not only is it more easier to use and build dashboards, but it's going to enable more uh, types of layouts and also new types of, uh, of panels because now we can actually have panels that stretch vertically like this. Uh, so the next thing that I want to do is build a new multi stack panel that allows you to sort of stack a lot of metrics vertically, uh, which is something you can do with single stack, but it's very inefficient because each single stack panel requires separate queries. Um, so that was the new grid system. Um, the next big thing that I want to touch on is, is the, the UX changes. So we've changed the, the side menu a little bit, uh, and we also so all the, all, the, all of the pages have a kind of new look to them with this tab look. It's nothing nothing super interesting here. Uh, Prometheus users might be sort of excited that they have uh, a search in their data source view because they have usually a ton of data source instances. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's mostly a cosmetic change, but also eases, it's a, you can navigate around the interface easier, and it looks a lot better. Uh, but a more so maybe meaningful UX change is that the dashboard settings views has been now kind of combined into a, a unified view, so you don't have to sort of switch uh, these views to a drop-down anymore, so you can now access annotations. The section that we previously called templating is now called variables. Uh, version history, uh, where you can restore different sort of older versions of a dashboard. Um, but so that's new grid, new UX. Uh, in terms of a new capability, uh, the biggest thing that we've been working on for it feels like ages is uh, folders and dashboard sort of dashboard folders, because that's been one of the top rated uh, feature requests. Uh, so new other ways to organize and launch performance installations and group dashboards along team lines or application lines. Uh, so previously you could do that with, with tags, but tags, uh, well, people didn't feel sort of tags was enough uh, of a tool to sort of organize uh, dashboards. So that's why we kind of introduced folders, which allows you to sort of expand and collapse these, uh, these regions uh, or sections. Uh, we also added starred and recent dashboards. <laughs> Uh, to the search. Um, and the folders can also be managed, uh, or dashboards in general can be managed through these uh, new managed dashboard pages, which allows you to sort of do some admin, so quick administration of dashboards. You can do multi action, move, uh, move mul multiple dashboards, uh, or delete multiple dashboards. And it's also from these views that you can administrate sort of the, the folder permissions, which is also a completely new thing in Grafana V5. Uh, in that you can actually set permissions on folders and on dashboards. And of course, if you set the permissions on the folder, they will be in inherited uh, by the dashboards that they uh, that contain. Um, so, I um, uh, can sort of review that quickly. Um, so, uh, the permission system is, a, is pretty easy. You can add permissions on Teams, which is also a new thing in D5. I uh, can show that in a sec, but you can add, so add permissions on the user, a particular user as well. Um, and you can add permissions on the team. And if I go to a dashboard that is contained, uh, so any dashboard has permissions as well, and then they get sort of their permissions inherited. Um, and you can, so uh, you cannot override the folder permissions, but you can override the default sort of uh, role based permissions. Um, as I said, Teams is a completely new sort of thing that we are adding in B5. Uh, mostly, uh, now they're only sort of there for the permission system to make it easier to manage uh, uh, 
manage the permissions. Uh, right now, we only have permissions on folders and dashboards, but we hope to add them to, add them to, to data sources as well. Um, so lastly, uh, there's one feature that I want to sort of just mention. It's hard to demo it because it's a backend feature, but I think it's kind of sort of uh, be appreciated and, and it's, it's interesting uh, in a way. Uh, and that's a, pr a provisioning system. Uh, previously in Grafana, when you uh, created uh, new data sources or new dashboards, it had to be done through the UI or through the HTTP API, which kind of requires that Grafana is running and it's uh, a bit tricky to do from a sort of configuration management perspective or sort of automation perspective. Uh, people have been sort of managing to do that through the API, but it's, it's tricky. So now Grafana has sort of a built-in provisioning system so you can set up data sources and dashboards through configuration files, which is going to sort of make a... Uh, yeah. It's going to be super easy if you have Kubernetes or anything, so uh, you just spin up the fauna and have your data sources and your dashboards already there. Uh, it's also an active sync, so if you change them on disk, it's going to be sort of, uh, be, uh, you have to don't have to restart the fauna for that change to be picked up. Um, so that was kind of the, the, uh, the, the V5 feature highlights, uh, uh, and uh, I will have a few uh, uh, Few features that I want to highlight as well that I'm not sure everyone kind of is aware of. Um, uh, it's because it's a feature that was written in and also re quite recently added as well. So annotations is a very old feature in Grafana uh, uh, that allows you to overlay uh, overlay rich event, event data. I'm just going to remove this. Uh, this is kind of what I want to show. Um, so uh, annotations is an old feature in Grafana that allows you to sort of overlay these events on graphs. Um, so it could be sort of deploy events, uh, marketing, outages, anything. But uh, before in Grafana, you, you had to set up a, a, a sort of a, an annotation query that fetched these events from a data source like Elasticsearch, ImportsDB, Prometheus, GraphPy, anything that kind of could, could, could uh, contain the event data. So what you couldn't do was to create these events from within the UI. And that's actually something you can do starting from v4.5, I think it was when we introduced this feature. So just by holding down command uh, on Mac or Control on Windows and Linux, you can uh, sort of open the add annotation view and sort of describe, describe an event. Uh, and of course, uh, this um, can also be automated and done through, through change the HTTP API to create these uh, and these are stored in Grafana's own database, uh, so you don't have to sort of set up uh, a data source to store these. Uh, well, what else you can do is actually, uh, if you do the same thing, but uh, mark a region, is to create uh, a region annotation and uh, uh, write a description. And uh, the, the, the tags here are kind of important in that it, it will allow you to show this event on other dashboards uh, and find some short filter for it. So now I'll save this. If I now go back to this new grid dashboard, I can add an annotation query called outages and say I want to look at all annotations that are created in the Grafana database uh, with the tag outage. And hopefully if I zoom out, uh, So uh, if I tag it, I can then sort of create these annotation queries on other dashboards and actually show them uh, sort of on a conditional basis. So I can toggle uh, that annotation on and off. Um, another, I mean, I, I, showed, I touched on, on templating briefly before. Um, what you can do uh, uh, beyond just sort of using template variables to create dynamic dashboards is, is you can also have uh, Grafana repeat uh, panel. Uh, and what's new in V5 is that you can have a panel be repeated in a vertical direction, not just horizontally. So in this case, uh, this single stat panel is being repeated for each value uh, on the side here. Um, and you can have, uh, there's also a concept of rows in Grafana, which is still there in V5. It's slightly different. 
But again, you can also have the fauna repeat whole rows for each value you select in a, in a template variable. Um, so uh, the, sec the last kind of tips and tricks is, is showing how you can use style overrides in the graph to, to really customize how your graphs look. Um, in this case, I'm showing uh, network traffic in and out, and uh, I'm showing uh, the out metrics uh, on the bottom, so on the negative axis. Uh, and the way I'm doing that is using uh, a display override, saying all series with the name out in its name should be in a separate stack group, and should also be transformed uh, uh, sort of and visualized on a negative y-axis. Uh, there's other use cases for sort of style overrides in that you can sort of really customize uh, how each series, series should be sort of displayed. You can sort of say, uh, okay, this series should, shouldn't be displayed with, uh, uh, with uh, any sort of line fill, uh, or this series should have points. Uh, so I could sort of say this should uh, not have any lines on it. So you can really customize the look of your graph using style overrides. Uh, there's also a, a, a cool style override, override that's called fill below two. That allows you to to uh, fill a region between two series, which can be can be useful if you have a min and max and average. So you can sort of, uh, mar uh, sort of mark a region. Um, that pretty much uh, covers most of the sort of the, my demos, and uh, wanted to leave some time for questions. Um, uh, I'm sure there are. Okay, then please stay seated and uh, quiet and time for questions. Oh yeah, sorry, I, I, should, have I should have mentioned this. Um, so, Bera on Monday. Uh, we, we, had, we knew that it for, for uh, uh, Thursday, but since we were going to go to Boston and uh, travel uh, yesterday, we kind of pushed it uh, uh, to Monday. So, the plan is, uh, the plan is to reach it on uh, and uh, stable, we hope to sort of do uh, in, time, sort of in three weeks' time at uh, GrafanaCon. Uh, how, how is your uh, company funded? What are your, your means of financing? So uh, Grafana Labs uh, have provides uh, uh, hosted metric services, uh, which is our kind of main sort of hosted services for, uh, uh, for both Grafana and metric, and that's kind of our main, main revenue driver and uh, we also have support services and, uh, and training and, and other sort of sources of revenue as well. Um, we are deploying a lot of dashboards in different environments on different service, uh, different services um, and we will change a lot of, um, yeah, we do a lot of on dashboard design and so on. And what about the old dashboards? Is it possible to use them or are you Oh. Them or uh, very good question. Uh, so the, the question is sort of uh, with this new bridge system that is introduced in V5, what, what kind of what, how will sort of old dashboards work uh, with that new system? Because the positioning is completely different. Uh, so the, the answer is that your old dashboards will work just fine, and they will sort of as we will, before we will try to migrate them to the new positioning system. So it should look close to identical with slight differences in panel height. Because in Grafana V4 and, and going back, you could set panel height and row height to a sort of per pixel level. But in the new system, there's a kind of snap. Uh, so you cannot set the, the height of panels sort of, uh, on a per pixel level. You have to set it a, a little bit more constrained. So there's going to be slight differences. I also recommend you to try the, the beta. You have to update your plugins because panel plugins uh, could have some issues with the, with the bridge system. Uh, we try to sort of test with most of them, and they should most of them look, look fine. Uh, but a few might need uh, an update. Uh, the, the biggest thing that to keep in mind though is that if you change, uh, if you save a dashboard in V5 and you try to import it in V4, it's not going to work. Um, but you can use the ver uh, uh, yeah. So, so if you downgrade, you, you can use the ver you can use the version history system to downgrade uh, a dashboard you you save. So you are adding two new features, uh, so provisioning of the dashboards and uh, folders, so you're grouping them. Are those features compatible with each other? So can you provision uh, folders of dashboards? Yes. Uh, 
uh, uh, you can provision uh, folders as well. Um, I think, uh, yeah, you, you, the way you specify folders is that you, sp or the way you provision dashboard is you specify a specification file where the dashboard on, can be found on this, and then you can specify a folder name as well for where, where in the UI, or uh, like before I can create a folder for those dashboards. No, uh, well, uh, the, the, the JSON is, is slightly different. It's, it's sort of because the, the, the panel's position uh, model has changed. And it's no, no longer structured in rows. It's more structured in as a sort of, here's a collection of panels and their position. So the, the, the structure of the, mo of the JSON is, is slightly different. But it's, it's mostly sort of, instead of laying them out in rows, they're just in a flat array now. Yeah, 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 everything is stored in Grafana's database. Um, we have, I, I, was, there is one big change that I haven't, didn't touch on because it's kind of, uh, and that's, it's uh, Grafana's, the, the IDs for the, da uh, for, the for the dashboard have, have changed and the URL has changed. And this is something we worked really hard on this last minute and it's related to the provisioning system and also uh, before Grafana V4 and back going back, this, the slug is the unique ID for a dashboard. Uh, and the slug is based on the title. So if you change the, change the name of the dashboard, you break all the links to dash, dash, that dashboard. So if you have so all the alert emails or links in Slack, that those links are not going to work anymore if you rename the dashboard. And we thought that was a really bad experience. Uh, and also kind of ties into to, to the provisioning. So we wanted a unique ID and, uh, uh, and something in the ID, something in the URL that we can tie the dashboard to uh, even after you change change the, the dashboard name. So that's kind of why the dashboard URL has changed in V5 as well. Um, the, um, sorry, the user management and permission management, does that come as both to the um, provisioning system or the API? Uh, it is exposed to the HTTP API, but it's not supposed, uh, so you can't provision users or organizations and teams through the provisioning system yet. Something we sort of uh, uh, we have talked about, but we're not sure about. But it, it's it's definitely so sort of something that we, we might want to add. So you can sort of add specifically teams or users and provide some some rules there. Um, but uh, it's not nothing nothing that's done right now. Fine. Uh, how will you deal with uh, other to providers for significant terms, like your certification? Or how, uh, how I will provide this OAuth to as our, our authentication provider? The permission, how will you deal with permissions for other identity providers and using users? Yeah, uh, currently we don't have uh, so, uh, any way, so we haven't written any way to integrate the permission, the permission system with outside sort of permission systems, so, so LDAP, OAuth. Um, so all these permissions are something that's kind of only living up on right now. But we will probably look into some, some, some way to, to sync these with outside uh, sources as well. But currently, this is something that only lives in the corner. Um, so I'm saying the first thing about that slide. You say, uh, if I define a dashboard in Pio, then it is loaded and it's also stored in the database, or? Yes. So, so a big, uh, the reason for that is sort of uh, to provide some features to so everything in Grafana is kind of tied to that, to the da uh, dashboard in the database. Like if you, if you star a dashboard, if you have alerts in the dashboard, the alerts is kind of tied to the dashboard ID, uh, database ID. So there's a, a bunch of features that sort of require the dashboard, uh, uh, the database ID. But, it, but the ma we, we, what's cool with the provisioning system, both for data sources and dashboard, is that you can lock down editing from the UI. So, so you can sort of control that sort of, this data source is not, is, so the master data is the, the file in the provisioning system, so you don't sort of accidentally change it in the UI. So you can co sort of have some control over that. Yeah. The region, the region annotation, is there a way to get those from data sources, not, not from Grafana's database? Uh, 